Good evening and welcome to the Weha Mag West Hartford Chamber monthly TV show. I'm Ronnie Newton and I have the pleasure of being the sole host from from the uh, West Hartford Magazine and, and Weha.com side because our esteemed typical host Tom Hickey is actually having some car problems so he wasn't able to attend the taping today. And let's just say that he wishes he had a regular key <laughs> instead of a key fob. So uh, the purpose of the show is to update the West Hartford community on things that are going on in the various business districts around town. And we have some special guests here today. And I'm going to ask them to, one by one, introduce themselves and give a brief uh, overview of who they are. And then we'll come back to them and talk about what's going on in their specific parts of town. Um, let's start with you, Cindy. Thank you. I'm uh, Cynthia Sanders. I work for Daily Moving and Storage, and I am representing the Home Design District. Uh, and I'm Tracy Flader, and the co-founder and executive director at Playhouse on Park and co-president of the Park Road Association. Uh, I'm Barbara Lerner. I'm the executive director of the West Hartford Chamber of Commerce. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Karen Fillion, and I'm a member of the Bishop's Corner Neighborhood Association and I'm employed by Edens and we uh, own and manage uh, a couple of shopping centers at Bishop's Corner. So, well I'd love to make this, this show all about spring. I've worn my pink skirt today <laughs> and even though winter this year seems to have been lingering much, much longer than it should be, I think we need to talk about spring and spring events and spring going-ons. And actually, because I got an email the other day from the Bishop's Corner Neighborhood Association, I'd love to start with Bishop's Corner and, and talk about the planters and anything else spring-like that's going on there. Well, yes, the planters um, are, uh, again, uh, they're not actually for sale, but you uh, sponsor a planter. And last year we had a dozen of them on either side of North Main Street at Bishop's, the shops at Bishop's Corner in the Whole Foods. And uh, they're running around 350 or 380 a planter, and they're a three season planter, and they're all um, uh, Knox Foundation. Right? Yes, not, but I'm trying Foundation to say the Knox, Knox Foundation are the folks that uh, actually provide the planters, they provide all the plants. Uh, for three seasons, they water them and they take care of them. So this is really a wonderful collaboration. So this is the second year that it's happening. Okay. It started um, last year in um, Elmwood with Charlie Hilborn. Right, I think actually two years ago, I think. Oh, so, in so we're going to a third year. A third year in Elmwood, a second, second year, year in Bishop's some of the other Warner neighborhoods. We had a, we had a few Road. last year, and we're we're having greater efforts this year. So absolutely. this is this is really an interesting thing that started in one neighborhood oh. and has now spread. And I know the Home Design District also had some planters last year um, with one person, and it's amazing mm -hmm. what one person can do. So they now sell an average of 50 to 60 planters along New Burton Avenue. And the hopes are that the same thing will happen in Bishop's Corner and along Park Road and in the Home Design District, and it really dresses up the streetscape. Mm -hmm. Well, initially we had only budgeted for eight, and we ended up that we needed more. And I, I think it was either 10 or a dozen, so that was great. Um, I have a couple of other things to report on. Great. Uh, so, a taste of Bishop's Corner. Uh, the plans are underway, and we've uh, I've met with Tom Hickey, and we've gotten in touch with uh, Rone from uh, the grounds, and we're planning on having it inside this year at the grounds. That way, we don't have to worry about weather like we did last year, and. Um, it's, we're hoping uh, that that will be a great venue to have it at. Tell and us where the grounds are. The grounds are at uh, Crossroads Plaza at 740 North Main Street behind Big Y. And the lower uh, lobby entrance you go mm -hmm. in and then it's just down the hall. Okay. So and that'll be great. don't know what the grounds are, it's, oh. it's like a teen center. Right. It, it's been, a, been around, I think it was called the Underground originally. Mm -hmm. It used to be in the old Barnes, Barnes and, and Noble, Noble space right. in, in the other Eden's Shopping Center. Yeah. But well, it's Maximum been, Beverages now. Right, right. It's hard to remember what, was, know. what <laughs> was there before. So rolling into that, so I um, have some information on um, a new tenant that we're getting actually right next door to the grounds, and it's uh, SDSS Martial Arts Studio. And uh, it's located in the lower level, and construction 
um, is well underway. They expect to open up uh, sometime in May, and they have 15 locations in the Northeast. This is the eighth in Connecticut. They serve ages four to 80, and they've been in business for over 40 years. Wow, that's excellent. I'm gonna have so, to make sure I get that for business buzz. Yes, so that's, that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's that, this will be really great because the timing uh, might be that they actually will just be open when we have the Taste of Bishop's Corner. And uh, one other business is uh, the Regional Cancer Care Associates is uh, opening up in June. They've taken 8,000 square feet at Bishop's Corner West on the third floor. So uh, we're happy to have them as a, a good addition and a good tenant at Bishop's Corner West. That's great, a lot going on. A lot going on, yeah, yeah. very busy, yep. And I understand there's a lot going on in the Home Design District, too, and there's a new marketing campaign that's oh, been launched. Yes, we have, and we're so excited because uh, we're on television, WVIT, NBC. Well, uh, you're on television here, too. Well, I'm on television. <laughs> <laughs> this is NBC, and uh, 5, 6, and um, uh, 7 o'clock, uh, we are on the news. We have a 15 or 30 second commercial you can see. Thursdays through Fridays. Uh, we're also on on Saturdays for the news at 6 o'clock. Uh, and then we're on the, uh, the Today Show uh, at 7 on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So we, we're really excited about people looking and um, seeing our commercials on television. But if you don't wake up that early or you're at work, uh, I invite you to look at our website. We've redesigned the website, and we have a couple of um, we have a couple of uh, YouTube's mm -hmm. digital things in there. So if you really want to see the person who owns the store, the business owner, go to our website. They are right there telling you who they are and what they're doing. And then we have a digital, um, I'm sorry, a paper uh, campaign that really tells who we are and for those in the district who didn't know for some reason about the Home Design District, this is how you can become a member. Because nothing really excites us more than being able to refer people to those businesses that that we don't that we don't have. So yeah, we've been busy. And what's really the message of the, the new branding? It, it's to to make it to make people aware that it's kind of one stop shopping, but also at a high level in terms of service, in terms yes. of quality of product and it's collaboration. Your, it's your road to home design, from soup to nuts, and. Um, that's really what we want to tell people. For in a one mile radius, you were able to find practically anything you need to um, de redecorate your home. Mm -hmm. That commercial was done really so well. It really gives you a sense and a feeling for who these businesses are mm -hmm. and what the representatives yes. are like. And so I saw the 30 and I saw the uh, 15. But what I liked the best was when you go to your website and then there's that kind of little um, little story about so many of the businesses. Um, you, you guys did a great job. Thank you. We're really excited and really proud of I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah. I know. Yes. It's Sounds really great. Wonderful. Well, Any other news to report about your own business or well, anything else in the Home Design District? At Daily Moving, I really would be remiss if I didn't say when all of the redesigners come in to um, redesign your home, it's spring. You might as well get it, you know, spring cleaned. Uh, we can store your furniture for under fifty dollars a month. Wow. So wow. you know, and we, we take it away, we store it, and we bring it back into your brand new abode. So that is um, something that um, we help as our neighbors do the home design. Um, and from Delhi, we're just getting our spring uh, season is popping. You uh -huh. know, North Carolina seems to be the place people want to go. And you know, uh, what they do is they talk to each other, 
And then they say, you know, we're going back up to the Connecticut for um, the summer. Maybe we can put our stuff in one truck and save money coming to Connecticut. And so that is something we would absolutely entertain. Mm -hmm. Great. That sounds great. All new information for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you planning a move? No, but, but uh, you know, storing furniture, I, I just never even mm -hmm. thought that it would be that simple as, right. you know, and that inexpensive. So Right, like when we've done our kitchen, when we did our kitchen, we crammed everything into the right. dining room. You yeah. don't have to do Our kitchen and family room. Well, you're right. refinishing your floors, you know, and it's right. like, right. where do I move you, my furniture? Right. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't think to do that. Yes. So yeah. that's a great idea. Never Absolutely. think to call a moving company. Nope. Yeah, never. No. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I'll tell all my friends. Exactly. <laughs> So Tracy, how about Park Road? Sure. And the Mayor's um, Charity Ball, which is, I know that you're a uh, director of that. Yep, or? lots, lots happening. Um, as far as Park Road, we are uh, beginning to plan for the 20th anniversary of the Park Road Parade, which will be in October. Wow. Um, but we're going to kick off the celebration with an event at the Pond House on April 12th. Um, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. that will um, be a part celebration, part fundraiser. So we'll, it's only $20. All the food will be provided by Park Road neighborhood restaurants. So we have Plan B and Zest 280 and uh, a number of restaurants that will be there. We'll have entertainment um, by some of the favorites that you've seen in the Park Road Parade over the years. And it's only $20 with the cash bar. So um, really excited about that. And then we'll be, of course, looking ahead to the Celebrity Breakfast and some other new fundraising ideas to um, to get ready for the parade. And uh, our beautification club is hard at work. They're planning their first walk of the season. Last year they started, uh, we have four or five different maps and we um, get groups of people together to just walk around and pick up trash and clean up. And spring cleaning is definitely needed as the, as the snow melts away. It's unbelievable how much trash is left behind. So there'll be, I think that's April 28th, um, there's information on the Park Road website and also Park Road Facebook page, but uh, the more the merrier. Um, we have large groups like from the Junior Women's League coming um, to just to sort of pick up. And they too are also looking for sponsors for the planters. So I think uh, we have a goal of a minimum of 14, um, but hoping some of the individual businesses will also put a few on their own property. Um, as well so that's very exciting for us and anybody interested in getting more engaged with the beautification club should definitely go to our website which is parkroadct.com for anyone who doesn't know that um, at the playhouse we are about to open a show called the revisionist which is a very uh, beautiful intergenerational story. It's a story about a young boy who's 24 who gets the writer's block. So he goes to Poland to visit his great aunt and um, they end up having a relationship that is very unexpected and she's a Holocaust survivor. And so it's gonna be a beautiful, beautiful story and it's a short 90 minute um, play. And we're planning a night um, where we're going to encourage people to come with someone that's special to them from a different generation. So an adult child bringing, bringing their grandmother or um, mothers and, and daughters coming together. And we're gonna do a talk back with the cast and the director, but we're gonna have desserts that our own board members and volunteers um, are gonna bake recipes that have been handed down from different generations in their family. So that'll be a fun night and that's April 20th, but the show mm -hmm. is running for three weeks. Um, and yes, you mentioned the Mayor's Charity yeah. Ball, which we are, the Playhouse is a beneficiary of that event, May 12th, um, 6 p.m. to 12 a.m. It's really a fun event. Uh, I can't speak more highly of, uh, we have a new partner with the Doro Catering and um, who owns Treva Aver and Zohara. They'll be um, cooking mm -hmm. this year for us and the meal sounds amazing. Any hints as, as to what they're serving? Uh, they are definitely serving a sea bass and filet, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I think that uh, there's about to be a press release that highlights the menu, which will be very, um, a lot of the appetizers will be representing their three different restaurants. So there'll be a Zahara station and um, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. We're excited about the new partnership and of course, Dancing Till Midnight. So we're still looking for sponsors, we're looking for advertisers, we're looking for auction donations, but tickets are also already on sale on the website. So themayorscharityball.org, www.themayorscharityball.org. So. Well, and it benefits two different organizations. The town that cares as well, yes, which is the social service uh, arm of the town. So they they do the food pantry and fuel assistance and um, you know the goal is to raise at least uh, fifty thousand dollars for each charity so 
If you have not been to the Mayor's Charity Ball, it really is a fabulous oh, so event. Much fun. Um, and, and Karen, you always seem to win something there. <laughs> hey, um, she won the Hamilton <laughs> tickets, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Have you done yet? Oh, yeah, we went. That, yeah. that was two years ago. Okay. Yep. My husband and I have such a great time, and it's, uh, his birthday is May 9th. So this so is you celebrate celebrate his yeah. Birthday. So we celebrate his birthday. It, it, it yeah. really is a wonderful community yeah. event, and, and it really brings together all different groups in the community. Absolutely, and you know we've heard rumor that there's a perception that it's not open to the public, that it's a political event, and it is not a political event, and it's it's really a fundraising event, and it's open to everyone and anyone. And um, I think it's it's always a good time. You know what I like about it is that my husband and I are put at a table of people that we don't know, so I get to engage you know with new folks in town meet and, new and meet new people and it's really has uh, it, it we've enjoyed it now we've been going I think uh, three years so yeah well and if people aren't aware that um, the uh, business associations that are represented here um, are open to not just businesses but people who live in the community um, the businesses are not successful without their neighbors who are the residents in the community. So if anybody wants more information about, and there are five business associations, and we have the Home Design District represented here, Park Road and Bishop's Corner, but there's also um, Elmwood and West Hartford Center Business Association. You know, I think it's a good point too because we all have monthly meetings and, yes. and our meetings are open to the public. And I think sometimes that is a big secret. Not enough people know that they're welcome to come. And we've just experienced that recently where some, you know, we, we are um, basically a, a neighborhood association because we are um, mixed use of residential mm -hmm. and and businesses and um, you know a whole block of, of neighbors just recently realized we actually meet and that they're welcome to come mm -hmm. and and we received they came to their first meeting and we got letters afterwards saying how informative it was and you know so we need more people to know that they can come out and join these meetings and hear what's going on and hear, have their voices be heard well and it's a great way to get um, true information about what's going on right. because the police typically do a mm -hmm. report at each yeah. association meeting um, the town gives a report whether it be public works or economic development um, I give a report so we talk about what the chamber is doing and what's going on at the diff I kind of report on the different business districts mm -hmm. to each other um, and it, it, you have the health department. I mean, mm -hmm. so it's all different groups that are giving you information that are really pertinent to the people who live in that particular yep. right. area. It's really so. important to know what's going on in your in your backyard, in your front yard, in your neighborhood. And even if you are not inclined to know about what's going on in the rest of the town, you definitely should want to know what's going on right yep. where you live. You should. And, and so the chamber has a bunch of things happening, too. Um, we have a business, um, Companions for Living, that was located on down further on Farmington Avenue, who have, have just built a beautiful new building on North Main Street, right by Bishop's yeah. Corner. Um, and they are having a ribbon cutting on, um, I believe it's April 5th. Mm -hmm. So we invite the community to come and celebrate this wonderful business relocating in a larger location. We also have our Business After Hours, which is April 12th at Sinopolis, the movie theater at Blueback Square. So that's a little different location yeah. for us this time. And our Economic Development Luncheon, where Mark McGovern and uh, Kristen Gorski will be presenting what happened in 2017, what we can expect to see in 2018 in development in town. And as usual, Ronnie can attest to this, there is a lot going on. I mean, we're looking forward to um, Corbin's Corner and all the yeah. new businesses opening there. I must get five phone calls a week from people asking me what's going in and when are they opening. Well, I get yeah. I get emails constantly or calls. So my understanding is that Saks Off Fifth or Saks Fifth Avenue Off Fifth has put on their website that they're opening on April nineteenth. Oh, Great. no wow. kidding! So I haven't had a chance to confirm that, but that's that's what they're saying. And what about World Market? Because all my girlfriends are asking me about <laughs> World Market. When is I, it going to open? I don't know. We're going to make a night yeah. of it. We're going to go out to dinner. And we're going to shop and well there'll be a yeah. lot to do there REI has their signage up I drove by on do Sunday they? so they have two big signs up on the building and um, Shake Shack actually has contacted us so they're oh. looking for a ribbon cutting already oh wow so, what, um, what, do they have a date yet well they were talking about um, maybe four to six weeks out although it didn't look like it on <laughs> Sunday so. well Shake Shack doesn't look like it's that far along but it, 
from what I understand is that is supposed to open before mm -hmm. the rest of the shopping center. Yeah. So they told me mid to late April. They move quickly. Yeah. It's amazing how quickly, when I look at the build outs at, at Bishop's Corner, it's like, oh, are you kidding me? You're going to be opening and, and then it's just it's before done. you know it. Because they work nights and they, yeah. you know. Well, I think it takes a lot longer to do the exterior, right. you know, the, oh, the construction, the, the framing and all of that. And then, then it goes like that. Yeah. So that hopefully is what what's happening. So if you want to know what is in town, <laughs> the Chamber does a guide every year. So this is our printed directory and we're working on the 2018-2019 one right now. So not only does it contain all Chamber members, you have to be a Chamber member to be in here and you're listed alphabetically and then by category, but it has a map, it has a listing of all town services, phone numbers you would need. So we really like this to be a guide for people in town. Keep mm -hmm. it in your car, keep one at home. So it makes it really easy. So if you're interested, you can also contact our offices. So and so and outside of the um, dis districts that are represented here, there are a couple <coughs> of other new businesses that are going to be opening. Um, FO 135 is going to be opening in the former South Main Pizza Place at 135 uh, South Main Street. That's why it's called FO 135. I got a sample of the banh mi, and it is so so good. Um, the, the owners have run a lot of restaurants in the area, a lot of very high regarded restaurants in the area. I'm not going to come up with the names right now, but one was in Hartford on New Park Avenue, another one in Glastonbury, another one in Canton, and um, have a great reputation in, in the food in industry. And that's kind of in my neighborhood, so I'm really looking forward to, to a place that's going to be opening that I can walk to, as well as Rockledge Tavern which um, is taking over the space that was formerly Angelo's on Main in, at Rockledge Golf Course. And uh, that should be opening sometime very, very soon this spring. And uh, my neighbors and I are looking forward to being able to walk up there. It's about a quarter mile from our house and uh, you know, have a beer on the patio and, and dinner and, and look out at the golf course. It's a beautiful location. And that's the Beachland Tavern Group, right? It, it's Beach, right. Beachland. Beachland uh, Restaurant Group. Beachland Restaurant Group that's mm -hmm. going to be operating that restaurant and it's going to be called Rock Ledge Tavern. And there are a few in the center too that are that are underway. Um, Harvest, Wine Bar, and Song, both on LaSalle Road and, and they're going to be opening up soon as well. Um, anybody else know? Well, then we have a co the coffee shop. Uh, oh, right. Spot Coffee. Spot Coffee. Is oh, where's that going to be? Lubeck Square. Very it's nice. in the old White House Black Market space, and they're pretty close to opening, I understand. They, they seem to be very close to opening. They, they are counting on sometime in April as well. And Skeleton Key should be opening soon, too. They're uh, probably a little bit farther out. Um, I, I've talked to the owner of Skeleton Key and Deadbolt. They said the restaurant Deadbolt might be opening before Skeleton Key, but certainly their goal is to, to open by late spring, early summer. Right. Well, can you tell me about Skeleton Key? Um, it's a escape room, so um, and that's also in Blueback Square off of um, Raymond Road. Oh. So we have a couple of escape room venues. Yeah, there's in town um, now. Mission Escape is the other Mission one. Mission Escape on LaSalle Road. Yeah, that's on the second floor above Brico, I think. Yes, that's great. On 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 LaSalle Road, but yeah, I think they're all different. Um, I. I'm probably going to be really, really bad at it, but <laughs> I, I can't wait to try anyway. Um, I know one of the games at Skeleton Key is called Virus, and the owner of the business sent me a, a bunch of posters advertising the games, and one said virus.jpg, and I thought, I'm not going to open this. <laughs> I got a little scared, and then I realized, oh, he's not sending me a virus. That would be a little too too obvious. but. Um, I, I can't think of what one of, one of them has is Scarab, I think, and it's got a camel yeah. involved in it. Well, there definitely isn't a lack of things to do in town. So wow. if you go to the Chamber's website too, because we kind mm -hmm. of compile everything that's happening and list it on our calendar. Because I know Hello West Hartford has an event coming up too. You have right. That's um, always at the end of April. Right, and you have your event. And mm -hmm. I wish I could remember all the dates. You have your event at the Pond House, the Mayor's Ball. Um, we have our business after hours. Our dance card is filling up. I know. Flo, <laughs> Flo has two events coming up. Flo is the Chamber's Young Professional Group. And um, they have their annual meeting in May at the Pond House. Mm -hmm. So they will have um, a band and cocktails and an open bar and uh, all sorts of fun things. And then That's even great. looking farther ahead, plans are very much underway for Celebrate West Hartford. And I know that organization, and I'm on their board, 
so I'm going to give it a, a little bit of a plug, but they're always looking for volunteers, for new volunteers, because there are a lot of people who've been on the board for years and years and years, and I'm talking like 30 years since, since, it, um, came, since it's been in existence. And uh, it's, it's a really great event, a way to, to really celebrate everything about this town. There's food, there's music, there's a juried arts and crafts fair, and it's always a little bit different every year, new food vendors, um, the arts and crafts vendors change, and, and the music always changes. Yeah. And when is that in June? It is June um, so 9th the and second 10th. Weekend. Yeah, the second weekend in June, and it's um, right here on the grounds of West Hartford Town Hall, and it's it's just a wonderful way to you know end the spring, end the school year, and, and welcome summer, and really celebrate this town. And it, it hi the music really highlights our talented students in our public school system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they're always performing. And then local performers who have some recognition, you know, statewide or nationally, mm -hmm. too. I mean, we're really lucky to have oh, that so kind of lucky. talent here. Saturday is, is all the schools. So it's the jazz band and, the, you know, the hall jazz band has won all sorts of, or there's a concert jazz band and a regular jazz band, but they've won all sorts of accolades at the Berkeley Music Festival, at just jazz at Lincoln Center, sure. and they're going to be performing. And uh, groups from Conard, groups from the middle schools, everybody. So it's a it's a great event. And you see everybody you know there. Yes, that's true. <laughs> With their dog. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's a great event, mm -hmm. and and we love going to the event. Mm -hmm. We love seeing who's there, experiencing new food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and the craft, the level of the crafts is really very high, so. And I'll be at info booth number two, right <laughs> up against town hall. <laughs> so anybody who wants to, to chat with me and give me some ideas on new stories of things going on in town, I'm, I'm welcome to hear that. So is there anything anybody else wants to say? We're about out of time. It always goes by so, so quickly. Well, this is a real, I think it's the first time we've had all women there you go. doing this show in the two years we've been doing right. it. So this is really a wonderful show today. Great, yeah. Great so. show. Well, yeah. thank you, everybody. I appreciate your coming on today, and we will see you in May. Thank you.